Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. U.S.-South Africa relations came under the spotlight this week, ahead of a planned visit to the country by President Barack Obama. Terence Creamer joins me to share some insights on the state of the relationship. Terence, welcome to Second Take. The Obama visit has been overshadowed by the state of former President Nelson Mandela's health. Nevertheless, attention is being given to South Africa's relationship with the world's biggest economy. That's right. I think uh, it is really being overshadowed by the illness or the condition of uh, the elderly statesman. And I think that the visit at the moment is on schedule and on track, but if anything were to change, I think the visit would, would also change. But I think that really the relationship is still in focus because President Obama is making the second visit to sub-Saharan Africa in his uh, time as president. This is the first of his second term. And, you know, the background is that uh, I think there's somewhat of an unhappiness that uh, uh, a president of the most powerful country on earth who has very strong uh, roots back to Africa hasn't really uh, paid much attention to Africa. In fact, even um, uh, comparisons were being drawn towards uh, between his presidency and that of his predecessor, George W. Bush, saying that uh, actually George W. Bush has done quite a lot more. But I think we have to see this visit as part of a process rather than event. So even though it's being overshadowed by other things and there's a lot of criticism behind the scenes and there's been some working on this relationship for some time um, uh, from the Obama administration, various documents from the Commerce Department, various uh, agency interrelationships and visits that have been taking place, as well as we've had visits by senior, other senior U.S. government officials, the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, acting Secretary, Secretary of Commerce last year. So we've had uh, a number of building blocks uh, leading up to this, this big visit by President Obama. And I think that it has brought, uh, again, a spotlight on the relationship, not just on South Africa and the U.S., but on Africa and the U.S. And I think the main underlying theme is that Africa is no longer just a place where, you know, that uh, the developed world needs to consider for giving uh, aid, but really it's becoming a new center of growth. And that's really what Obama is going to, I think, during this um, uh, uh, visit to the three countries, Senegal at the moment, South Africa next, and then Tanzania. I think he's going to really be focusing on the fact that this is a, a new frontier for American business and signaling, signaling that you know America as a government and the administration wants to be involved in the, the further uh, progress of this economic miracle that's in a nascent stage, as well as saying that you know, American businesses need to be alive to this new reality. What are some of the key issues shaping the conversation between the two countries? Well, I think the key issue is this uh, awakening of growth in Africa. You know, we, it was the forgotten dark continent and suddenly it's now a bit of a flavor of the month. Uh, many of the fastest growing economies in the world now are within this continent. And there's uh, a re realization that, you know, as the rest of the world is uh, in a difficult spot, that um, one of the few areas or bright spots in terms of growth, and I mean, not in terms of the, the daily experience, it's still a struggle in Africa, but in terms of the slight improvements that are happening in the, in the world, there, there, there's a lot of backward sliding in places like Europe and America's gone through a very difficult position. But, uh, you know, we've had the China uh, boom over the last few years. We've had Asia also emerging. And I think there's a, an awakening to the fact that Africa is, is starting to, to uh, be put in place the policies and systems. And I think also the, the political systems that are necessary to stimulate growth and development, as well as it's a, a fairly uh, uh, important continent for uh, natural resources, oil being a major so, uh, being a major source of oil and producer of oil, and also a range of natural resources, which I know the commodity cycle is down at the moment, but on the whole, there's a long horizon for a lot of these uh, commodities, and these commodities are going to be needed, and Africa is a source of those, as well as the the um, the food security issues that the world is going to face in many years' time. You know, there's a lot of arable land still in Africa, totally under-resourced, under-utilized. But 
it is a potential breadbasket for the world if the if continual improvements are made, particularly in the areas of governance, which I think we've seen some good steps forward and a couple of steps back here and there. Um, and in terms of uh, having good economic policy thinking, which I think on the whole things are a lot better than they were a few decades back. And then uh, I think the next big step is to make sure that the infrastructure is in place to sustain uh, this growth and to stimulate it further. Because without the inf infrastructure, the, the, um, the, the link from Africa to the rest of the world is curtailed. And the, that link's important because it is going to probably need to be an export-led growth, although we are seeing something of a consumer revival as well in, in Africa. If we just look at AGOA, that's the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act, how is South Africa approaching the issue of its um, proposed reauthorization? Well, it's a big issue for South Africa. AGOA has been important for us because we send a lot of our exports, nearly 50 percent, I think it's 40-something percent of our exports, into that giant U.S. market duty-free, and it's really because of the Sagara benefit, and it's it's various uh, uh, commodities that we and products that we get in, and we're one of the few countries in Africa that can take advantage. Uh, it's it's a lot of lines or tariff lines that are open to African exporters, and we're one of the few that can actually take advantage of quite a few of those tariff lines. In other instances, it's it's fairly restricted and fairly sort of one commodity or one product oriented type economies. So South Africa wants to sustain that and uh, it expires on the 30th of September 2015 and the conversation has to be had around the nature of the extension. Um, obviously South Africa would like it to be even improved and would like certain other lines being opened up but I think it's fairly realistic in the sense that it really is really pushing for a rollover and a rollover not only to the rest of Africa who I think the rest of Africa, I think, will still be seen as a deserving of a goa from American lawmakers and the administration, but also for South Africa, who might seem less deserving given our, our relative development versus the rest of the continent. And it is going to be a hard-fought battle. Now, I think during this Obama visit, there's going to be some officials are going to try and test the waters, uh, test the temperature around the reauthorization. What do we need to do? to have a rollover for a sustained period. South Africa talks optimistically of a 15 to 20 year type horizon of, of extension. I doubt that very much. But the, the, um, how, what, what do we need to do to ensure a reauthorization of that? And what do we need to do to ensure that South Africa is not excluded? Now, there will be, this is not an administration issue. This is not a Barack Obama uh, presidential decision. This is a decision that has to be made in, uh, by Congress and by the lawmakers in, in America. So it's really gauging the, the temperature. What do we need to do? I think there's going to be a message back to South Africa that you're going to need to do a lot because Congress is very divided and it's a very divisive place. And I think there's going to need to be a lot of discussions with a lot of individuals. And I think South Africa is gearing up for that discussion, not just with the congressmen, but with their staffers not just with their staffers, but with the think tanks that, that in, in, and lobby groups in, in the US that are very influential in making these sort of decisions. And I think South Africa's message is that it's important that we have coherence in terms of the trade relations with this region. So America is wanting to support regional integration as is important um, for the future development and growth of Africa. And it would be difficult if one of the countries within those regional blocks, for instance, SADC or SACU, had a different trade relationship with the US. And it would lack coherence and it would undermine the regional integration cause. Plus, we want to take that, free, that into regional integration much further with things like the, uh, the trilateral FTA, taking it from Cape to Cairo up the east of African continent. So it would, it would be difficult to have a a uh, different relationship for South Africa versus, uh, say, the rest of the continent. And then the other thing I think that South Africa will want to sell very hard is that the, this is good for America. It lowers the cost of its uh, supply chain, it diversifies its supply chain away from uh, other uh, you know, traditional uh, ex import or exporters to America, such as China, as well as um, it, br it brings a lot of goodwill from the side of Africa to 
uh, the way Afri uh, Africans perceive the U.S. because of they go and they're going to push that hard because they're saying if you're seeing this, if we go full circle from where we started as a new growth center, you want to be seen as a favorable trading partner, investment partner, etc. And I think they, they're going to uh, push that line. And then the last thing in its favor is that our trade relationship is quite deep as well as our investment relationship with the U.S. and quite you know, uh, well established and we'll look at the issues of, look, our, our trade is fairly balanced. Yes, it was, it took a dip after the financial crisis, but it's recovered to about 122 billion rand a year, two way. And it's, it's fairly 61 billion, 61 billion uh, exports, 61 billion imports. So it's a fairly balanced relationship, which is not always the case with all the economies that America engages with. So, and then there's the investment relationship with over 600 American companies already uh, having roots in South Africa, and some of them using this as an export location for products, and some of those products go back into the U.S. market. So I think there's a lot to be done, and there's, there's a lot of work that will be done over the next few months, and the decision, I think, needs to be happened next year. But I think uh, the arguments are, and, and the building blocks are in place for a, uh, a concerted strategy to convince not just the Obama administration, which seems very supportive, but really the, the lawmakers and the congressmen and senators that this is a good idea. Terence, thank you very much. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.